Oh, what's the story, our lad? What's the story, our? What's the story, our lad? What's the story, our? Our! All right, our lad. Grand, our lad. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to What's the Story Hour. How are you getting on, Frank? Oh, not a bother, our lad. How are you, Ray? No. All good, me man? Not a bother, not a bother. Um, big one coming up for you this evening, our lads. It's, it's going up later on the show. We've Councillor Tony Murphy um, coming on to give us now insight into what's going on in Balbriggan. So, um, yeah, hopefully. We won't be talking about Magnum. Yeah, we we were told we're not allowed to do any uh, Tom Selleck jokes or anything like that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> unfor- unfortunately, as I said there's there's legal ramifications there, you know. So yeah, copy to, That's it. We have to be careful there. Yeah. But um, yeah, we've got coming up for you later in the show. But Keith, you usually like to like to oh, count yeah, me sorry, in, here. Ray. <laughs> well, Ray, who's been bowling the brig this week, hour? Yeah, we've a few now for you this week, all right. Um, I'll start you off with one that I just thought was funny. Um, more so for the image that was in my head around, around what happened, right? So I'll give you a Vicky, 19 years old, Pinewood, right? Um, the guards were called because out in Balscadden, a car, there was an incident with a car, right, where a tyre got blown out. So when the guards arrived out to, out to Balscadden, you know, to survey the scene, there was a Nissan Almira there, tire gone, no tax, no insurance, three little heads hiding behind the wall, right? <laughs> three little heads. <laughs> so the guard copped the three heads, obviously, you know, called them over, and Vicky happened to be one of these, you know, one of these three. Um, and she was driving the car from, from, <laughs> from what I read. But basically, this is COVID times, and as I said, pine wood. The SCAD is further than the five kilometres, Frag. Further than the five K. Now, she basically had said that the you know the guardie didn't ask her where she lived, and if if she had have been asked this question, she would have said that she was living in her boyfriend's house in Dunsatna, which would have been it within have been the five kilometres. Yeah. But she maintains she was never asked this question, right? Judge wasn't having a bar of it. She was convicted of, you know, breaching the COVID regulations and she got a hundred euro fine. They didn't say anything actually about the no tax or insurance or anything. It was it was just the COVID, but oh, there you enough. go. I just uh, said when I read that, I just said three, you know, three people hiding behind the wall. <laughs> 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 but now um, we'll move on now to Michael, 35 years old, um, Clenard Street, who was charged with um, being intoxicated and abusive behaviour, right? Um, basically, Michael was stopped by the guards up in my Lara, full as a boot, and, you know, wasn't impressed with being stopped as well. <laughs> it was basically this. So, yeah, so he got abusive and, um, you know, whatever, the, the usual. I suppose this is one of these ones that we always have. So he got abusive anyway and was... Laying into the guards or whatever. Now, I'll give you one now. The solicitor, right? So the solicitor asked for leniency, right? Why did the solicitor ask for leniency? Don't know, right? This, this, this is a new one, right? Why did the solicitor ask for leniency? <laughs> so this is a new one, right? So basically, recently enough, he was drunk and he took a shortcut home and right. he had a fall and he broke five of his ribs, broke Oops. his wrist and he had a collapsed lung as a result of this fall. So, so the solicitor asked for leniency because he because he was drunk and disorderly this other time. Probably was able to fucking move after was, that. Yeah, and that was, he was drunk and disorderly <laughs> this other time, but he was drunk and probably not so disorderly, but you know, he managed to do obviously terrible damage to himself. So the solicitor asked for leniency, but again, convicted 200 euro fine. Yeah, and he still got all these broken bones. So yeah, ouch. Um, I finish it off with going back to Pinewood now. Um, Stephen, forty six years old. He's from Kilock, but the crime happened in Pinewood. Um, so yeah, so basically, what happened was there was a property searched. Um, in Pinewood, Stephen happened to be there. Need hundred and twenty euros worth of weed. And 140 euros worth of cocaine on him, right? 
So fair enough, right? So what's the excuse, right? Suffered terribly from migraines. So the weed was the weed was for the migraines, apparently. But they're not giving you a migraine. Give me a migraine anyway. <laughs> Okay, me uh, yes, that's it. We had before the boy friends. He said he doesn't remember why he had the cocaine. He said he must have, <laughs> he, he must have bought it. He must have bought it ages ago, is what he said. Oh, that's but, a good he, one. but he never took it, so he just, just carried it around in his pocket, like you know. Um, but basically, he pleaded with the judge because he has family in Australia that he'd love to go and visit, and obviously a conviction and conviction time, yes. fuck that, yeah. Um, so. Surprisingly, to be honest, considering the amount of lads we're getting that are getting convicted over tiny bits of weed and whatever, you know, um, the case was struck out and he made a 400 euro donation to charity. Um, and yeah, so he'll be, he'll be able to go to Australia and see his family and hopefully the migraines are, are getting better. But that's it in a nutshell this week, Frank. So let's move on to your favourite part of the week. Oh, yes. It's time for a random pony. Well, it's just a bit around the pony. Well, we'll start off this week. Um, did you see all the drama unfolding on Sunday, Raymond? On Sunday? On oh, Sunday. With the football. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got to <laughs> When Coutinho scored that second goal, I was like, oh. <laughs> but I just want to say this to all you lovely Liverpool fans out there I'm not bitter or anything like that but I would have loved him I would have like I'm telling Kevin Keegan there, I would have loved him to be in the milestone for that five minutes <laughs> and see he got the fourth goal and then when he got the second goal and then when he got the third goal and you just see the mood just drop yeah. and then I would have just left that would have been enough yeah. for that five minutes yeah I would love him to be in that crowd that Anfield could see when somebody said it. They obviously, Ward got to Anfield that Villa went 3 2 up. <laughs> I just see him I see he went 3 2 up. I see he went 3 2 up. Yeah. But I gotta say, I was on the side, it was fantastic drama. I sat there in the kitchen and got full of the boot. <laughs> <laughs> and we're moving on. Um, well, we start off this week where we had a story coming from Jamaica. Um, <laughs> Just, yeah, I love how international they are getting these days, Track. Basically, what happened is that one of the zookeepers was was feeding the lion and he bit his finger off, and it was in front of all like people. And oh, all that's gross! Oh, it was like Jesus, the poor, poor sod. Like he, he when he pet the tiger, obviously he's had a he has a bit of a rapport with the tiger, obviously over here. Yeah, yeah. Well, Tiger said, "Give me that." Tiger said no. Tiger said no. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. How do you get a nice claim out of that all the time? Well, I'll tell you one thing, you want to be getting some claim out of that. <laughs> if you do, it, what you? If it was your baby finger, you'd probably be alright. Think about this one here. Oh, it's the, oh, the index finger. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, that's, oh. that's, that's <laughs> Apparently, there's proof that there's aliens now on Mars or what? Oh, Jesus Christ. But I've seen this photo the other day of a. Uh, fucking aliens of some around figure. The this is proof. But the gas thing is, like, I'm looking at this kind of. It's a figure kind of laying on a rock. Right, not just like sprawled out, like yeah, and it looks like there's, it looks like there's a person lying down, right? Right. Yeah. But like, why is that all so blurred? Like, why can't you get up close and see what it actually is? Well, I'd say that's probably something to do with Mars being about fucking ten million miles yeah, away. Matter. Matter. It doesn't matter. Like, you can, if you have one of them shitty cameras that they now have, <laughs> you can get up and see what this bloody thing is. So, I don't, I don't buy into this shite. No, just yet. Just, yeah. I'm, I'm half half you have and we keep going yeah, there's definitely aliens I don't, know. I don't know that's not enough proof for you to know no because I wanted to see the fuck or look good <laughs> I wanted to get a good look at him yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey moving on now now this is happened in America right now this is very bizarre I don't know if it's bizarre or if it's nice in a way <laughs> let me explain it to right, you go on. this lady in America she had a dog and the dog's name was Biscuit and the dog and Tom Ford Ford. passed away, right? right? <laughs> and what right. happened was she got the dog cremated. Right. Right? And she was scattering the ashes of the dog on this lake where he used to go walking with the dog. And mm-hmm. when she was scattering the ashes, no, I was like, whatever way she scattered the ashes, the dog appeared in the shape of the ashes. Oh, will you stop? <laughs> no, I swear to God, it's actually a boat woman. It's a boat woman. It was like he was saying, good boy. 
<laughs> no. He's a bad cunt. No. No. Jesus Christ. Oh, fuck I God. God was saying goodbye. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a spiritual moment, Ray. <laughs> there is spiritual moments in life sometimes, don't you? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor El Biscuit was. You know. <laughs> Taking the biscuits. <laughs> Taking the biscuits. <laughs> nah, but no, not fair. See, the, the comfort that you, the, the owner would have got out of that. No, there actually is a fault, Robbie. You should have a look at it. Right. <laughs> Moving on to the UK now, Ray. And then, closer to home. Basically what happened here, now this is, Jesus Christ. You move in to a house. Right. You got neighbours. Yeah. Starts off, everything's grand. Start chatting away, neighbours are fine. Yeah. 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 So I mean, you're you living there a little boy. What happens is the neighbors are getting a bit noisy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they're getting a bit pissed off because it's you know we've been there before in the past. It's not nice. And um, so basically, they're playing music late, late at night during pretty probably you got little smart kids there, and it's not nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. So basically, what happens is you once had enough next door, and she calls the cops and or, no, not calls the cops, calls the council with complaints. Yeah. So anyway, they started obviously feuding then because they were obviously not lowering the music down or just basically being feckers. Yeah. But anyway, God love this poor lady. She came home one afternoon after a new and she looked at her front door and you know what the name was doing? Uh. Smeared poo all over her front door. Dirty, oh, dirty bastards. bastards. Yeah. Dirty bastards. Now, that's just horrendously no, bad. That's, yeah. And th- th- but that's the kind of thing that ends up with someone knocking in them with a fucking sledgehammer and just you know well I've got to tell you if someone does that to my dog I've been knocking in the sledgehammer <laughs> for her absolutely horrendous animals animals well I'll leave you with this last one here Ray I just want to ask you this question do you think, it's, do you think this is bad or do you think it's it doesn't mean matter right right this woman this, this woman she proposed to her boyfriend okay the day before her sister's wedding now, do you think that that's bad? Is she taking the limelight off her sister, or do you just think because yeah. better than at the wedding, isn't it? In yeah. The, yeah. Well, you could see her sister was fuming because obviously it's the day before her big day. She should be like helping her get ready and all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And no, then I someone that she she pops the question to the fella. Yeah. So that's you, probably the weirdest part of it all, to be honest. Well, the ladies do do that once every four years, apparently, on the 29th of February. Was it on the 29th of February? No. Oh. <laughs> so what you're saying is... You t- <sighs> yeah, look, you know, with the way weddings are, you know, it's, it's a few days, you know, it's three or four days of it being all about the bride, the bride yeah. and the groom, yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's bad form, but it's definitely not as bad form as... Smearing poo in the door. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, compared to like this, you know, imagine like if somebody, in the middle of your wedding oh, there, yeah, yeah. someone just decided, you know, oh, yeah. hold on a minute, if that was meant to make. Poor, poor, poor. Yeah, like that's, that's proper bad form now. That, that's on a par with smearing shit all over someone's front door. <laughs> anyway, Ray, it's time for Tops at Tour. I'll let you go for this week. Tops at Tour, I'll go, I'll go for us this week, Frank. Hold on, I got me sounds. I only need one sound this week. <laughs> Actually, so do I, Ray. It's one of it's one of them weeks. But um, I start you off with a series that um was suggested by Sean Coin, Henny Coin. He's been talking about this for forever. So it's definitely a tour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised he can get it on the Rolls Royce, to be honest. But uh, anyway, um, series. Uh, on Netflix called Money Heist, right? So it's a Spanish heist right. drama, okay. as well it is, right? And it basically centers around um, a girl called Tokyo. She's kind of the, the main star. Um, it's not a real name because I'll explain that. There's a fellow called the Professor who right. rec- who recruits a lot of people, mm-hmm. and basically, you know, they're gonna pull off this big scam, and it's. Robin, the royal mint of Spain, right? So this is so we're talking, you're talking billions. Do you know what I mean? Like not, not chump change as they say, right. right? Yeah. So the premise isn't the premise isn't bad. You know, he's kind of like a Spanish Ocean's Eleven, I suppose, putting together this team, gonna do this big job. Um, 
it was boring as fuck. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, I give it a. Do you know what I give it? A, like I'm probably giving it more than it deserves. I'm giving it a two out of five. It kind of looked, looked good. Do you know what I mean? It was yeah. a bit slick. But yeah, it was just it was boring. It was boring, and it's yeah two out of five. It's a tour. Fair enough, brother. Um, and I move on now to. I, I've, I've only myself to blame for this to be honest so <laughs> well no this is I should, I should have steered clear this came from your sister Denise right yeah, yeah, yeah. no no this is nothing to do with Denise now this is more I should have known when I looked at it that I was like no I'm not I'm not watching it because I had the choice right? yeah you know, we got loads of suggestions left, so I had a choice of what I could watch but I settled on this one right so it's a film on Netflix called Senior Year it's a new one out now. And it's starring Rebel Wilson, right? Oh, As... right, yeah, yeah. Now, right, you see, again, right, I, I dislike her. Anyway, do you know what I mean? Right. So, her mouth's too big. Right. <laughs> anyway, right, so it's Rebel Wilson stars as... It's, it, the film starts in 2002, and Rebel Wilson... Well, it's not Rebel Wilson, it's a, it's a young one. is playing um, a character by the name of Steph... Oh, we got Conroy, Conway. Sorry, me right there. Well, Steph Conway, right? So she's like this, you know, super popular kid in school, and she's um, you know, she's the the captain of the cheerleading team and all this shit, and she has this, you know, the jock boyfriend, that typical fucking American yeah. nonsense, right? Um, so one of the girls in the cheerleading team doesn't like her, and so she basically conspires that when they're at the end of the year they're doing their biggest cheerleading uh, I don't know what would you call it display yeah, whatever yeah, you want yeah, to call yeah, it yeah. so she conspires with her that, uh, with some other people that you know they're gonna not catch her at the, the final jump right, right so she yeah, falls yeah, out yeah. bang into a coma yeah. right so she wakes up in 2022 as a 37 year old woman who obviously still has you know the mind of uh, the mind of a 17 year old and basically, yeah, the whole film um, kind of goes on then. She's, you know, she wants to be the prom queen because she was supposed to be the prom queen in 2002 and she wasn't. But, you know, she learns a few, you know, valuable kind of moral life lessons yeah, yeah, as she yeah. goes on. Like, you know, it, you know, you can't say certain things anymore and all this sort of carry on, right? Got 27% on Rotten Tomatoes. And to be honest, that is 27% too much frag. Denise... I can't really blame you because I picked it out myself, but uh, yeah, zero out of five, absolute, just brown fucking sausage, like just <laughs> toward, brown toward sausage. That's, <laughs> that's oh, brilliant. that's as good as I can. That's as good as I can give it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fourth one this week, guys. I'd like to thank. Um, Paul Richardson for this one. Um, this is the, it's a film on Netflix. It's called The King of Staten Island, and basically it's about these four teenagers they hang around together and all that, yeah. smoking weed and all that, hanging around with a couple of young ones. But then um, he's living a man. One of the main characters is living home with his ma, and his, his, his dad was a fireman. His dad died. He was only young, so he's yeah. living with his ma for years, basically, and all that stuff, you know. And, his ma starts going out with a new fella and he's actually a fireman as well so the young yeah. lad's all pissed off because she's going out with a new fella because he's actually sort of left a bit out he was he already had a run in with his young the other lad had a young he ran, had a little run in with him so your man already hated him yeah so, yeah, they were, yeah. so basically the long of the story is your man's jealous of his ma and your man and you know starts getting he starts trying to make life difficult for your man coming into the family and all that so yeah Basically, in the end of fighting, his man fucks him out with a gaff and dumps your man as well. <laughs> and then your man's got nowhere to go, so he starts building a relationship with your man. Oh, I know, oh, yeah, it's a bit weird. It's a bit mad, but yeah. you know what? It's actually, it was actually quite decent, I have to say. Yeah. I'm not going to spoil the rest for you, but yeah, it, it's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. So I'll give it a three and a half out of five, and I'll give it the good mark. Give it the good mark? Yeah, give it the good mark. It's very good. Hmm. Moving on, and this one um, is the program that I was given. Uh, thank you, Ben Coyley, for your 
selection. Okay. Um, <laughs> this one, yeah. This is on RTE Player, and it's called The Funeral Director. And I gotta say, it was, re- it was, it, I really, really enjoyed it. It basically fell out in Ballina, I can't remember his name, but he's a young funeral, how he runs it. Yeah, yeah. He's telling you, like, how he became a funeral thing, and basically, like, there'd be a pub in the middle of the, in, in, this, in a rural area, and that'd be where the funeral would be held, and that's where they do it, and that's when he started the whole thing up, and yeah, he yeah. went to the Chicago and trained over there, and all that, and we are basically showing you what happens behind the scenes when somebody passes and all that, and it was, Really interesting, I have to yeah. say, and I re- really, really enjoyed it. But it's really mm-hmm. worth to watch now, I have to say. Um, yeah, I'll give that a 4 out of 5, and I'll give four that a good mark five. as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so two, so two good marks this week. Two so this thank week, you very yeah. much for your selections, everybody. Yeah, that's it. Cheers, everybody, obviously, for, as I said, I've, I've literally, I've dozens of them now at this stage to be picking from. I said, hopefully, I pick better ones next week. <laughs> But um, anyway, yeah. that's been uh, that's been tops at all, Ray. We're now on to the bit the main event. The main event, yeah. As I said earlier on, lads, I said we've councillor Tony Murphy coming at you, um, coming up next, yeah. So yeah, look forward. To hopefully, enjoy that. Yeah. And this evening we have a very special guest for all you bad breaking people tonight. You may remember this man from such. TV programs as Magnum PI and films such as Three Men and a Baby. Or you might just remember him as being one of the top goldsmiths in Barbregan. And also now he's councillor, Mr. Tony Morphy. How are you doing, Tony? Thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> thanks very much for the intro. I, tell you, I, I told you, I'll, 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 I'll give you any more after that now, right? <laughs> he was down for a Tom Selleck joke all week, so he was. That's, actually, there's one now, actually. I haven't got that written down. A lot of, a lot of questions about the moustache, Tony. Ah, that was in the day. Why, why did it go? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I just, one of these, <laughs> one day I decided to take it off and that was the end of it, you know. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway, got plenty of slagging over it. And thanks to you, lads, for some of it. <laughs> for bringing it up again. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do, are we doing the quiz? Fuck, oh, fuck. Oh, they're, 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 they're terrible. Terrible. I terrible. forgot, actually, now. I actually forgot all about it. Had a, That's all right. a bit of a nightmare today, work-wise, and then coming down here. Forgot all about it. We normally do a thing... Um, yeah. when we have guests on called the five star quiz and it's normally a great crack but it was raised to want to do it this yeah. week but unfortunately he forgot to do it but well, maybe that's maybe that's my lucky day left <laughs> oh yeah you're probably right you're <laughs> lucky I wasn't doing it <laughs> Actually, I'm raising now. I forgot that. Jesus Not to worry. We'll so we'll, we'll get our started. Ray, I'll let you. We we'll get the bar rolling there. Well, that's it. Tony, I suppose. Look, um, you know, as Keith was saying there, obviously, you know. Goldsmith in a in a previous incarnation, um, I suppose you, you will stick to the kind of the politics. I suppose tonight, um, what sort of led to the move from, you know, Anthony Murphy Goldsmith to Tony Murphy Councillor? Yeah, uh, yeah, an interesting one when you look at it like that. Um, <laughs> but I probably was always political from um, a local interest and position. Yeah. So yeah. I would say. Um, the jewellers is and, and 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 working in that type of environment is different to say having a news agent where someone goes in and they get a pack of cigarettes and they get whatever they want and they're in they're out and they're gone and you might know them and you might know them but you you tend to create um good sort of say relationships with people they trust you with their jewellery and and it grows into a, a space where someone comes in they might be there for half an hour they're not there for two minutes you know yeah, what I mean yeah. so they're trying to pick out something so you, you get to know people better and you get to understand but I come from a time when I opened up in Railway Street I think it was 1983 and there was 6,000 of a population of Albregan 6,000? 6, yeah. 6,000 6, yeah 1983 that was the population of Albregan and we had the town council at the time well it was the town commissioners actually and then mm, turned into yeah. the town council and we weren't getting anything you know through the years you could see the slow change of pace. We got the um, the outer ring road. You know what I mean. So I remember seeing the parades going through the town. Like you'd have Larry Dunn with the the Apple uh, brass band, and he'd be leading it down yeah. and whatever. And then, like the, the the town commissioners themselves, and and again the town council tried to 
garner some interest in improvement in the area. But we're always struggling. See, we're an outlier when you look at where we are geographically from a political perspective because um, a lot of the, the, the political sort of say engine space and the, and the energy was in around source. And this yeah. is what still is. Um, so we weren't sort of say relevant when it comes to the numbers in order to impact right. on decision making around uh, the general election, etc. You know, so um, I could see there was issues, there were problems, there were social issues, and then when we hit the boom time, sure, like and we had massive housing, 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 no infrastructure, mm-hmm. no amenities, no supports, no, you know. So it it was sort of like as soon as the it, the um, as soon as the crash came, we were we were in Dutch Lakes and Bobrigan, you know what I mean. So we had an out of town shopping centre and um, built. Um, all of the vibrancy was being sucked out of the town centre. My own business was struggling, and and there wasn't even a, another jewellers up there. Like you know what I mean. Yeah. But you can see the likes of say the smaller supermarkets, um, and then when you Tesco moved out, th- that was a big attractor in the town centre, and that moved a volume of people out of the, out of the core centre. Yeah. So it was then you were getting dereliction. Lads couldn't get rent paid on shops. You know, we we're still having to pay our rates. So mm. all of that that mix. Then it's not saying oh, you sort of I'll I'll sort all this out. It won't. But I was driven in a political way that um I was with the chamber of commerce. We're talking about business and and to be honest with you, um we were tipping into TDs. We would have been talking to them. We're saying how do we get action? How do we get money? How do we get support? And one guy said to me, he said, lads, look at he says. You need to get somebody in to Fingal County Council at the decision making table. That's where the action is. Now we had councillors, but they were on their own. Yeah, yeah. And the real change came, and I'll be straight and honest with you, when we got the census in two thousand and sixteen, and we got the results to say we're the youngest population in the country, most diverse town in Ireland, and all of those elements started to come to the fore. Yeah. But we elected three councillors, not yeah. one, three from the Brigham, which is brilliant. And in the last local election we only elected two you know and there's power in those numbers yes. that's reality you know and we need to look at that and people in Burke need to come out and need to exercise their vote at, they do it in the general election but they don't do it in the local election as much as they should and yeah. then they put their hand up and say we're not getting this and this isn't happening no it's totally agree with you on that so you're in there yeah. fighting yeah. for uh, the immunities against 40 other councillors so if there's one person or there's three then you can imagine yeah. you've got a better chance getting yeah. stuff done yeah, that's, yeah. that's it and so we had to I always kind of laugh at that and said we've, we've the three scariest counsellors now yeah and I said I'll say, I'll say it on camera I'll say it on here I said Tom O'Leary couldn't find Balbriggan without a fucking sat nav <laughs> and he only ever comes over here for a bit of free grub Tommy that's as far as I can see but no uh, but I won't count on that but in yeah. all seriousness in yeah. what you're saying is that you know his vote doesn't come from Balbriggan and not that he doesn't care, but he's going to look after his voters as opposed to, you know, me or you or where for Lisbon, but bring them because they're the people that... Yeah, well, like the same, I, I, don't, the seat, you know? I don't get a big vote in Scaries. I get a vote in Scaries, but not a big vote in Scaries. But when you look at the amount of... I mean, we've doubled the population plus mm. and they can elect three and we only elect two and... You know, and we need to we need to be strong in that space. You know, yeah. we need we need to keep that power base, um, because you can see the changes that have happened. Yeah. You know, as a consequence of having that voting and um, number in there. You know, and being yeah. able to garner favour with other councillors. Would that have any impact? Like having more having like more councillors. Like say, for instance, like see the way that Barry can get so much social housing mm. compared to like the likes of Scaries and Malahide. Would that have any impact? Yeah, it will, and th- there's always been, but th- the reality is this, lads, um, but Brigham has always had a large amount of, of what you call local authority housing. Mm. You can go through all the estates, Gordon Park, Preven Park, yeah. Darren Park, right, going back to the years. The difference now and then is that we had real good economic vibrancy when we had local authority housing. Yeah. Right, so everyone was working, you had Wavin gone flying, you know what I mean, Hampton Mills, you could name them all. Yeah. So if you have a large amount of social housing and people are not working, you have major problems. Major yeah. problems. Because people are, are haven't got enough money, you know what I mean? They're, they're living on the edge, causes social unrest, people, you know what I mean? Um, so you need to have, you, you, the first thing I would always say that you have to make sure that the, the area that absorbing social housing has the economic vibrancy to support it. And, yeah. and we're still playing catch up there. Yeah, like recently we have um, an influx of business coming into Stevenstown, but only because 
the councillors and I included in this fought hard to have the land um, what you call serviced with yeah. the new road put in yeah. there so once you put in the investment and the guys can come in and say in business they can get a site plug in they've got Wi-Fi they've got whatever whatever before that those lands had to be um, serviced it would take oh I'm interested in buying a site here um, and how long it's going to take to develop it well we have to do this this and this and it'll take 18 months and then you do plan for another 6 months or whatever so I said well, is there anywhere else that I can go oh yeah, yeah. go to Blanchardstown <laughs> yeah yeah Oh, we have a side over here, we have a side over there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, yeah, you have to, you have to be very sort of say clear about what are the impacts. And you're right, we do have an awful lot of social housing, but it's not, and it's, the percentage is high. And the other rationale for not having it is yeah. that um, social housing isn't just delivered at as um, at free of charge. There's a cost to it. So the cost of a house um, differential in say Dunleary, yeah. Darkey. Um, Scaries, Malahide, Balbriggan diff- is different as a consequence of the land costs. Mm, right, yeah. So that impacts on the, on the end price. So you will have a decision maker in Fingal County Council saying, well, how much are those three units going to cost me? Those units cost um, the cost of the building plus 7%. That's what the developer under the, um, the, the legislation is allowed to get paid. But it's a different price in Malahide. It's a different price. Mm. But that's not a reason why you shouldn't do it. But it's part of the reason why some of the decisions are made about where we will actually locate those right, yeah. It comes down to dollars, money, yeah. and price. Probably like yeah. everything really, isn't it? Well, that's <laughs> it. And actually, <laughs> funny, funny enough, I was looking at the thing today, and it was a year ago that um, Glen Bay purchased, or whatever they purchased, for 9 million quid, but they got 21 million quid in government grants back. This is before a house was even, before a house was even built. I was just reading this today. I was like, it was just as I said, come up a year ago today. I was like, Jason, we've Tony on here now tonight. We're talking, you know, like you were saying, it, like you understand it, as I said, obviously, you know, there's, there's premiums involved in, you know, where you're building and stuff like that. It's just, as I said, I was looking at that and I was like, Jesus, I said, not a house built and the lads are already 12 million quid up, like, do you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, look, look at there, there is anomalies that exist and, then they are probably one of the biggest players I see um, fellas putting in planning applications and, and as soon as they have the planning application in, then they are swooping in, like we have it here in, in one of the Castellans area where a developer has um, has, uh, has, uh, has handed over, if you like, his land and his planning permissions for Glen Bay to build it out. So they're the biggest players, they can, they can yeah. build at a price and if the other player is, is, is going to get out of the game, then it's, it's an easy one, but it's not good to have a monopoly in, yeah. in, in that space because then they can control the market. That's, you know, we need to watch that. What is the latest on Castellans? Anyway, tell me. The latest on Castellans at the moment is um, the Land Development Agency who are the developers of the land yeah. have put in an application to um, Amor Planola under what's called an SHD, Strategic Housing Development. Yeah. Um, and that's new legislation. It was meant to fast track um, development where they didn't have to go to Fingal County Council or the local county council for permission. Yeah. They went straight to Amor Planola, mm. but you had to be over 100 units. So they've, they've lodged... Um, and we have to wait and see what the decision is on that large one. But what they have done is, and fair play, there's a lot of people in Belbrick and put in um, submissions against it. I did one, um, Grania did one. Um, and look, at, we, we have to wait and see. But it, what I will say is that there was a lot of um, material contravention. So they contravened the planning rules and laws that we make yeah. and policy that we make in, yeah. in Fingal County mm-hmm. Council. So we have the overarching document in Fingal um, at the local authority level is your county development plan and we're, we're actually redoing that at the moment. So within that, that, that tells you what you can do, what you can't do, the whole lot. These guys, they don't have to really adhere to it, although they should. Yeah. And if they don't, and you'll probably hear a lot about uh, JRs, which are judicial reviews, which yeah. are challenges that are taken against the board that makes a decision in favour of a planning applicant. So say, for instance, the Land Development Agency get um, a grant of permission to build the 800 and odd houses that they've, that they've applied for. Yeah. Um, and a consortium of people in Mulbriggan, the community association or whatever, can come and have a look at this and say, well, hold on a minute, um, they've contravened this, contravened that, contravened whatever. 
and um, it's too high a density the heights are wrong we did um, a master plan right which is a non-statutory document so it doesn't hold up in a legal argument yeah. in planning law right. right but it allows the community feed into a process where you can get a clear understanding of what you want for your area because we know best what's good for our space right and yeah. but regular not anti-housing but we're, we're, we, we would enjoy more of your um, two-story, you know. Um, yeah. Apartments are, are great in the city. Yeah. And they work well in the city for city living. Mm -hmm. They don't work well in the suburbs. And proven not to. Yes. Yeah, it's proven not to. Sorry, Tony. The Castellans thing, what was, what was the proposal for that again? Was, there, was it three-story? Originally it started out yeah. six and seven-story. And then we did the master plan, and the fair play to the people of Brigham, they came out in droves. Yeah. Again, the councillors fought it all the way, right to the end, till we got it reduced. There was a compromise, when I say it was a compromise, the, the, the last group of residents that I spoke to said we'd be happy with two, maybe some three-storey, and 500 units. The debate went on in the council, and we agreed um, to some three-storey, and, and it's all in the master plan. Yeah. Um, and 600 and odd units they go 650 so they've got in now with, with well over that heights of 4 and 5 storey um, and densities that contravene it and one of the other issues which really really appalled me was and this you have to say it straight it's on the, it's on the, uh, the website to see it yeah. if, you, if you look at the application that um, in order to get those densities they couldn't satisfy in our development plan the green space allocation so you have what's called class one and class two open space. So in order to have the requisite open yeah. space, each planning and um, development has to have like your class one would be your little play area and then your class two is, is community space that's given. But there, within the, the rules, you're allowed to um, take money in lieu. So Fingal County Council, at a meeting, said to the Land Development Agency, um, well, if you can't satisfy the actual land value that's needed here, um, we will consider um, a financial contribution in lieu. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this, this is, so, this, so is, this, is a, this is nuts. This is but a that's legal a, brown envelope. Well, it's it's, it's legal. It's legal. It happens yeah. all over. But it's it just. Crazy. But in order for us to bring the heights down, bring the densities in, they shouldn't be doing this. And you know what the really annoying thing is that the land development agency is a state agency. Yeah. It's delivered by the state to deliver homes for people. Right, and they're breaking every rule in the book. Yeah. Right. So they're not even okay. So the master plan isn't a statutory document, but you would think that the state agency would adhere to it because we're living in a democracy. This is the people's word. This is what we asked for. And you yeah. say, no, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> we'll tell you what you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically it. Isn't it's it? Like it. it. <laughs> when you narrow it down, to everything. Yeah. 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 But it's not over. Yeah. It's what so, to a yeah. shop like yeah, it's, yeah. I need a slice pan and two liters of milk mm -hmm. and here's a frozen turkey and some shoe polish <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean <laughs> you can give oh. me the, we want this but you can give you no we, we, yeah, what's it? we want this but I don't know we can give you that and we can give you that yeah. that's we don't want that yeah another one because I, I demanded to meet these guys right yes. and was challenged them. I want to meet and them they, now at this stage <laughs> wait I'll tell you they, like it's, it's this is it's crazy the way certain areas get um, treated differently yeah right and I'm just talking about the development and the design and everything right in Darkie where do I put them on they actually no it's a Dundrum sorry Dundrum the Land Development Agency were doing a proposal for a submission into um, the the board for an SHD. And I think they had 15 meetings with the public, public meetings, to go through the process. Do you mind if they hadn't been written? No? No, I'm correct. Mm. No. <laughs> yes, that's right. And when you ask them, they say, oh, well, we do things differently. Absolutely. But I'm going to say this to you. If it's, if it's inappropriate, I will be asking the people to have written come out en masse and yeah. say no enough already stop it's like you just sat there in your own hand with love money good, talks yeah, I'd love a good protest yeah. on myself so. yeah, yeah. I'll tell you I'll train yourself to the railing I haven't seen a protest since <laughs> what you call it water yeah. charges uh, not even water charges no since a lot of people went on strike in Tesco's there when it was still down the whole oh, street yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember that actually yeah that's, that's about the last proper protest I've seen around here 
Och det här fick du ju vara svid. Alltså, det var det fel mål. Det var det fel mål, det. Och det är Castlelands. Jag tror att Mjövant är någonting you know, slightly adjacent to that song. Yeah. Um, so obviously you've been doing, uh, and I've seen it, and said, you know, there's a lot of questions being asked now about swim pill. And obviously I think tying into, like you were saying, you know, a lot of people said with such a big read, or, you know, such a big development going on in Castlelands, you know, there has to be room somewhere for a swim pill. Um, now a question that I got asked was, is it seen you were talking about a budget surplus not too long ago and mm-hmm. why, why you couldn't be put to it. But the question I've asked is, right, so you were saying, what was it? It was 8 million? It's 8.2. 8.2 million of a budget mm-hmm. surplus, right? Mm-hmm. And they've also, they've also spent 8.5 million on a cycle lane, which is a dead end. That's, I, I haven't seen any any kind of work. I've chopped a few trees down. We're saying, all that money that's there. Where are we on the swimming pool? Like that? Like, yeah, we, no, but the, well, the, 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 not to confuse the two the two values, right? The 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 this is from the TII and the NTA, right? So the yeah. national, uh, the, it's it comes from the department the money for the cycleways because there's yeah. there's a move to change infrastructure and the way people move around towns and and, and cities and um, we not just tell them we build the cycle lane. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's allocations of funds oh, yeah, with, yeah, with, yeah, a, with a ticket yeah. on it. But to go back to what you're saying about in our budget, we actually had which we had was a surplus. So a lot of that is about um, over budgeting our inability to spend the money for whatever reason, which just come through COVID. I saw an opportunity where um, I wanted to put pressure on Fingal County Council to build a municipal pool, so it's going to for the public community pool. Um, 8.2 million won't build it, 20 million will. But I've done a bit of research on this and I'll, I'll share it with you now in a second. Um, when I put the pressure on, I was I had to do a bit of bit of work to find out exactly where the municipal park pools are across the country. Yeah. Right. And I was astonished, right? When I started digging in and seeing Mayo has eight and wherever they were, right? There's eighty one municipal pools in the country. Right. And Fingal County Council is the only county council with none. Like that to me is says a lot about the executive and and the councillors as well. And councillors didn't all vote for it, which t- to my astonishment, they were all holding their hands up and saying, I didn't I didn't think we were the only one didn't have one and, and all this yeah. you just hear this yeah. murmur yeah, yeah. going around. You know, but when 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 you when you put the the the, the, the um the call on to say, Well well let's vote for this. You know, this isn't about Tony Murphy. This is about everyone doing the right thing for the community. We act for the people. If I'm not representing the people and I'm representing my own view in there, I shouldn't be in there. Yeah. That's not what I got elected to do. Yeah. You know, so you have to fully understand. So people are taking taking personal opinions about what we should and shouldn't do. You know, now whether or not we that was the right position to do it, but I'm going to say it straight that there is, it seems to be, serious resistance in Fingal County Council within the executive not to deliver a swimming pool. We've been talking about it. The fair play to rugby club. Fifteen years they were on it, right? Yeah. There was talk about it going over to Scaries, I believe, because I've seen it on commentary. Um, people were asking for, or saying that in Scaries they actually collected money. Now I don't know what, when that was, or where it was. Now it's 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 twenty odd years ago or more. I think the ballast pit was was the location for it, whatever. Yeah. Um, I remember Trevor Charge talking about it, and he was sort of saying, but it still never happened. Like you know what I mean? So. Uh, I think we can do this, though. I certainly think we can do it. The, the Land Development Agency, what they've done up in Castlelands, have identified a land value, in other words, a field, yeah. a bit of the field, to say, well, you can put a swimming pool there, and they're going to serve for a swimming pool. Yeah. Where would you like to see a town, personally? I, do, I don't think that Castlelands is the right place for it, personally. I'll tell you why. Because the road in and out of there is completely um, yeah. dysfunctional. I mean, yeah. During, you have school campus up there and massive residential area. And, okay, they're talking about putting the fly over. Now, when you put that road over, that can do one or two things. It can release traffic, but it can also collect traffic. Yeah. So you can collect traffic across from, from Scaries, and they might say, well, we're going to exit five, or we're going to exit at six, whatever. But they, and they might decide to come over the fly over rather than coming around on the county bridge. Yeah. So you don't know what, is going to, what that's going to do to you. Okay, there's certain traffic movements and signs around that, but you talked to Glaston about Ludwig, and they'll tell you now with the new motorway, they're all coming back across this new road and they're coming down Darshatown uh, Road yeah. into Balrudri and, and going left to um, to exit five, you know. So the, and the, and the speed they're coming at is serious, you know. We I mean? have to look at all of that. So 
I can't say, well, if you're asking, ask me the question, and I'll tell you where I think it should be. It should be up where the school campus is on the Nall Road, where you have Tesco. Yeah. Because yeah. you've got lots of schools up there, but you can also get in and get out yeah. easier. The road is, is, is far superior. The only, sort of say, small bit of the road that's not appropriate is from um, exit six in to the roundabout at Sweetlands there. That road needs yeah. to be upgraded, and there's a call for that to be upgraded, and it will be upgraded. But when you have that proper road in, and you can imagine people could come from everywhere, come from the Nall, come from mm. Ballybuckle, yeah. come from Old Town, could come into Balbriggan, and you're not coming into the heart of the town or crossing through the town, creating traffic problems, yeah. heading over to yeah. Castle yeah. Yeah. Do you know? No, I think that's, I think that's so very... So that's where I would say. Yeah. Now, again, yeah. you can do feasibility studies, you can do all the studies you want, um, and there's talk about uh, tidal pools, swimming platforms, because we're all swimming in the beach. And again, that's we're struggling to get that done. But there's there's um there's a push on now and yeah, and yeah. I'm not I'm not taking the pressure off. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Oh, fair play. Um, and stuff. And that's actually you know, like I said, a lot of a lot of questions asked about just it's sort of mentioned it there, the castle lads and that the church roundabout is it's random to be said for just flattening that now Tony and getting the getting traffic lights put there instead. I, yeah, I, I don't I don't know if that is the solution. Um, I, I I just. I, the junction is not capable of taking the traffic movements that's going on to it. That's 100%. Yeah, whether you put traffic lights on it, whether that will alleviate or not. There, there, there is smarts around how you do that. Mm. You know, look, if, if, if you're being... These sp- lads how to drive around a roundabout would probably be a cheaper <laughs> start, to be honest. <laughs> you know I mean? Well, in fairness, I would 100% agree with you. However, <laughs> I will say that um, there hasn't been too many accidents on that roundabout. Maybe that's on. that's by only with his eyes around the circle. Yeah, no, but it, I, I think most people, most people local know that that roundabout um, is oh, problematic. And then oh, if you yes. have look, and I've seen it there. If you if you during the winter, bad morning, and you have a funeral, oh, yeah. right, it's a disaster. Yeah. You know, so you have that road is chock with cars. They're all on the grass. The car park is full. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we we have an issue with car parking spaces. We have an issue with capacity in the town. You know, so yeah. Um, and we have this ideology about everyone's going to be cycling and walking. I just yeah. say one thing to that. Yes. Rain's an awful lot. You know, yeah. Rain's the yellow, the yellow brick road now yeah. going around so eight and a half million quid. We might transition into <laughs> electric cars if they become affordable. Um, but certainly, cars aren't going away. That's my opinion. Ah. And we need to make provision for it. And what's happening is, I mean, regeneration and whatever, and I'm having conversations with the, the, the um, consultants at the early, early stages and they're talking about taking out 150 or 160 car parking spaces down in Keystreet. And you know what? They're 100% right. Because that space should be for the public. It should be yeah. an open space. It should be... But you can't do that and not think about where their cars are going to go. But that's it, yeah. Where are you going to put them? Where are you going to put them? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I would say this, I said in, in lots of conversations, and I was hoping that Fingal County Council, now it's in another space at the moment, so I won't say too much about it, but the old um, Tesco, Queensworth Shopping Centre, yeah. I thought that was going to would make an ideal um, multi-storey car park. As you come into Balbriggan and you could have all the cars you want in there, because yeah. you can come in at the top and out at the bottom, and you could then release all that surface area completely. Yeah. But Did anything ever come of that, uh, the, that, that development down there? Oh, Remember, it was up the, for the review. The judicial review. review. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 that's why I don't say too much about it. There is a planning application that was granted on it. Yeah. For one hundred and one was the application. It came out. I think it said they said it was, it was strange. You know, I think it was strange because the they report came out from both and the the seventy four, seventy five, mm-hmm. and then they said no, we made a mistake. It was eighty something. Like that's a small space for that amount of apartments, mm. and I personally don't think it's good. That's my mm. opinion. Um, and there is a judicial review going on, so there is um, a legal challenge. We don't think it's going to, to, to the grant. Yeah, that's actually yeah. we Dallas yeah. Davis on here um, a couple of months ago, and you know, basically just to talk about that specifically. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's like, it's, I, it's in conversation. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's something that I don't think it's something that anybody in the town particularly wants. I know people say. Oh, you want housing and then you're saying you don't want it. Like you said, it's, I think it's more people want the right type of housing. You want appropriate housing. And that's you look at, I tell you, in fairness, we spoke about Glen Bay and in fairness, you go out to Taylor's Hill, right? Yeah. They're good houses. They're smart stock. But yeah. You even go back, you've got, when the first private housing stock that was built in Madrigan, that I remember, um, you had Franker Heights, Hampton Cove, 
then you had tarot court, tarot cove, then art court. And people are living in them till the their end of life because they're perfect. Yeah. You know, an apartment in my mind is a transitional space. You live in it to a period of time and then you try and move out of it. So it has a transient yeah. sort of say uh, movement of people, which is okay in the city, but it's not appropriate. No, I'm totally right. Yeah, it's not appropriate out here. And that's it. And I think, like as we were saying before, I think that proposed, that development, the proposed last area in particular, all it does is foster a kind of transient you wouldn't even say community because it's not a community it's going to be lads heading in and trying to work not you know what I mean they're, you're talking one bed apartments studio apartments you know it's not going to be families and well, things no, no, it's, it's, you're, you're, it's you're, just people in and out you're 100% right the, the yeah. biggest problem I have with it is to, was twofold but it's two is, is, is the density there's, yeah. th- there's too many apartments but they're also built on this principle of um, built to rent yeah you can't buy them no. So. so you can't buy one of the apartments so somebody is going to make a serious amount of money out of renting all those apartments mm. and whether it's subsidised rent or not subsidised it doesn't matter um, you, won't, you won't invest in your property unless you're going to get something back out of it mm. that you're going to sell it on so you'll keep it smart you'll do it up you'll keep it right you'll paint it you'll maintain it so, so there's a big question mark over build to rent. I, I personally think that that disenfranchises people. There's an awful lot of people who are working, can't get mortgages, um, and then they're being forced into, because they want to get out of the house at home, they want to have independence, and then they're forced into renting. Why? Because yeah. there isn't an affordable model that suits the market. So it doesn't. So if, if the average person can, can, can borrow, say, between 200 and 300,000, that's the price of the houses. It doesn't matter how much it costs. If the government are going to build affordable houses, that's affordability. Yeah. If that's the matrix between 200 and 300,000. Nothing else. It can't be, oh, well, we try and get 350 because it costs this. It doesn't matter what it costs. If the support is there, it should cost what it can be afforded to be, to be yeah, bought. Yeah. That's, the, that's the bottom line. That's it, our lad. Just stay in town. Um, What's the proposal for the actual centre of the town? Because now, to be honest with you, now it breaks me hard walking past the Ennis's down there and I'm just looking at that. <laughs> Not just because it's Ennis's, because I. It was, it Mostly was, because it's just because it's Ennis's. No, no, no. <laughs> it's just, that part of the town and even down Key Street was a, such a vibrant part of the town for many a year in Babrigan and it just feels like. It's yeah. dying on its hole. Look at our, I, I remember <laughs> the Bell Hill, I remember before Ennis's, you might not remember. And the pub that was there before that, like, you know, um, I think it was Gallagher's, I think, I can't remember. But anyway, um, and that was vibrant. Bridge Street was vibrant. And it, what changed Bridge Street was actually, there was a news agents there. There was, um, I think it was Love Supermarket on the other side of the road. Um, Jimmy oh. Moore had, a, had his hairdressers upstairs, it wasn't downstairs. Yeah. And it, it was an interesting street, but th- what changed that was you could park in it. Yeah. And they widened the footpaths, and the footpaths, I have to say, were narrow and they were dangerous, and there was lorries going up and down or whatever, right? But if you can't do business in an area, then it, it changes everything. Yeah. And they widened the footpaths, they widened it around the ALB bank, and then that area died. Now, in fairness, there was investment put into Ennis as, as it was, and then the Brillen, um, and there was a, there was an element of, of, of business going on in that street, but it did change a bit. Yeah. However, the question you asked me, what's going on there? At the moment, the focus is on Key Street and yeah. the Harbour area. That's, that's where the focus is. And you'll see probably in about two, three weeks' time, um, the consultants are going to have a draft report out. And the Brigham people are great. They'll, they'll get stuck in and they need to feed into that. Tell them, tell these guys what they want. Um, yeah. And it should get close to what we want. Right? Yeah. But it's about listening to it because this is all about the people. It's all about what, what we think we need for our community in Bulbriggan. There's a debate on the other side with the Bruin piece, and I'll tell you where I am on that. I'm 100% saying, knock it, get it out of there, right? The whole, the whole lot of it, right? And open up, and they've purchased your units, take that out as well. Yeah. Open up that whole area back to where you have the waterfall. Right? Yeah. And you know, there is a proposal to, um, and they call it Mill Pond, Mill Pond Park, right? To bring, to, to, to enhance that area. And there's money attached to that from the URDF funding. Um, but there's a debate inside in Fingal where whether or not they should leave the footprint that is the Browns and take just take out Joe Keelan's. 
And I'm saying, no, if you if you come down um, from the AIB and you're coming into a break, yeah, and this opens up into this massive park area. Yeah, that'd be yeah. Fat. Right. Like it'll just it'll actually be game changing for Bobby. Yeah. Like you so, could attract like you could attract like you could do live concerts on there and put yeah. like big that. things into the town like mm. like it, it feeds into all the environmental stuff that people are talking about, you know. And you could even go back to I've seen photographs, you see them with the sort of you have some great exhibitions on, on photography and um and others. And um, when you see the mill pond, when the when the when the pond was the there, pond, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Was on it, you know, and I just about remember that. Um, and that's what I'm saying. It's not that long ago. No, 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 no. So it it can be done. Um, and what I'll say is that will go out to consultation. So it's not no one is deciding what that looks like except the people of Brigham. But we and looking at all the documentation, and I was just reading back through some stuff. Um, the wish within the forced consultation was to take it out, was to knock it. But I, there's some smarts that are saying, well, it has a value and it has this and we can build it. And, and I said, no, it, visually, the impact of having this massive oasis of an open space. In the middle of, in the the middle of town. So what yeah. you're telling me is there's no chance to end us to come back. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that, aren't you? No, look at <laughs> it. Feels over. You'll, you'll, have to, <laughs> you'll have to go into this as always or somewhere else to get a few points. Yeah. Feel like I'm into this as well. Yeah. That's it. But uh, speaking of that, I suppose you were saying the, the focus is on Key Street, and like you're saying, I think from if what I'm led to believe, you have this like you're saying, if all goes the way you would hope it'd go, that you're leading into this kind of you know a walkway filtering up from Key Street up into it. But as I said, the, the question that was asked, as I said, so yeah, well, O'Shea's yeah. well, bit the bullet. That a lot of people ask him why it was tarmacked. Now, I'll let you answer it. Yeah, that's as, that's as, as, as yeah. With you. I, yeah. I understand why it was, but yeah, no, it's a tenant. You want to hear from yeah, the process, absolutely. No, well, it's it, well, it's it's obviously not finished, um, and it's just <laughs> it's just it's just an interim phase. Yeah, but in fairness, um, Fingal County Council and the design team that came in there, they wanted to, the first thing they wanted to do was just remove it and have and stand back and have a look at the vista. Yeah, and you can see the harbour proper now. Yeah. So, if you look beyond what that is as a space and see the harbour area and say, right, well, that that was a good move taking that out of there. Yeah, a really good move because you can actually see it. Now we have to enhance the space around it. Put the pill back down there. Tell me where it originally was. You know the real there. That was only that was only a blowing pill. That was a real pill. My childhood down there was fabulous. Yeah. Well, no, it's like a big bath. Just to finish on the question that you, that you asked me, they're yeah. they're proposing to put in maybe ice cream crepes or give some commercial opportunity. Maybe um have a a portable artist studio down there. I've seen them where they have these um it's like a container that's retrofit and yeah. you have an artist in residence doing some work like you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is nice. So but that it, it will evolve, but it's it's not as some commentators are saying locally, it's not a new car park. It's gonna be a restaurant <laughs> down there. But it could be well, it. could be yeah, yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. there was some talk around building a restaurant over um at Braemore Castle. Yeah. And having a um, a culinary school as well. Which is interesting, where you have a restaurant on top looking out over the sea, and the yeah, bottom part yeah, would be nice. like your um, Colin Brew Street piece of work, you know, yeah, when you yeah. bring the guys in. Is that going to open up any time soon, Tommy? Oh, yes, it will, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it, it might open this year, um, but not. it's not complete. Yeah, and it is a struggle, and sometimes the pace of delivery yeah, is so. Years. Years. I mean, yeah, yeah. A, no, no, you're right. Oh, you can show up on the bricks yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. 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 different I, councillors I, working. I, 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 I always remember that. Uh, yeah. The most, the most optimistic man I've ever met in my life. A man that came in to us in Saint Malagas back in about ninety five, ninety six, I'd say, and he comes in and he's like, in five years' time, lads, this is what it's going to look like, and he's showing these, you know, artists' impressions and all this. This is what it's going to look like. It's going to be unbelievable. I nearly know who you're talking 20, about. 22, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was, like, it was like, you know, you have to admire that kind of optimism. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, optimism. No, no, no. But yeah, that's that, that, And it's in the rejuvenation plan as well. And there's 8.2 yeah. million attached to it. So it, it will come. I'm going to, I'll tell you, there is an issue with it. And the issue was so, something that probably, in, and I compliment the Historical Society because they were very embedded in, in, in getting that whole project off the ground and they wanted to build it with the integrity of what it what it was yeah right? but because it's a new build right it has to conform with 
with building regulation. Yeah. So it won't get a fire cert. So therefore you can't use it. Yeah. Right? So it's not what's called in building terms part end compliant. Right? Which means there's a, there's a series of things that they have to do in before. And I'll say it straight, there was a tug of love within different departments of Fingal County Council to say, well, we want to use it as an economic driver. It should be a tourism piece. It should be this. It should be that. And the other guys who built it with the integrity of what it is say, oh, no, no, you can't do that. You can't put a glass lift in. You can't punch a hole in the wall. Sure. Why would you do that? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, but it's moved on now and it's going for part-time compliance. So yeah. it will have all the requisite um, planning rules applied so yeah. it can actually be utilised. You get your fire certs. It, it will have a banqueting hall it will, and, and you will be able to go in and do have a tour and have a look yeah. around. And, 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 and it's and the rat and going under the arches down there as well, Tony. Down in Key Street, yeah. Key Street, yeah. The, the boathouse, yeah. That's out for, and there was a call for commercial uh, interest in that to have a coffee shop, ice cream shop, to have whatever. The point of it, there was a problem with it. It's a man with the beach shop won't be happy with that. Well, <laughs> any, any, anyone can tell that. <laughs> anyone can tell that. Yeah, so it's open. It's open. It should have some vibrancy there. Yeah. They're, going to, they're going to completely refurb it, but it's not owned by Fingal County Council. It's owned by Irish Rail. So no, Fingal County no, Council no. had to get permission off Irish Rail to utilise it. And then there was questions about what do you want it for, what are you using it for. No, I'm laughing at all this. Because this like, is a bit of a joke. When you start to bring something back to life, and then you say, well, what was it? What were you actually using it for? They're yeah. storing lawnmowers in it. And, and, and stuff from the yard up there. Because it meant if they were working in the area, they didn't have to bring all the gear down. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so there was no complaints whatsoever from Irish Rail when they were using it as a, as a, as a store or a shed. Yeah. But once you start to try and bring it back to life and use it for commercial value, then they're very interested in it. You know what I mean? So, but we've got over those hurdles. But that's, in all of that, I mean, I'm not excusing anything, but local authority business travels very slowly it's so yeah. frustrating um, and then when you understand a little bit more that okay that's why this took so yeah. long to do because I have to talk to this agent and I have to talk to this stakeholder and talk to this other guy and you have to bring all them into the same space and they agree it and then you get it done you know but it still when, for me it'll never happen quick enough never happen quick enough yeah you know? um, it seems like we're in that general area and said it's time to zip a few I would just say very kind of passionate um sort of questions and queries that come in from people. I suppose basically around beach maintenance. Um, as I said, obviously the regeneration of the harbour coming in, the beach is supposed to be kind of the, the jewel in the crown. Um, I've had a lot of, basically had a lot of people on, um, basically just talking about how it's, how it just doesn't seem to be looked after, I suppose is probably the, the best way to put it. Um, mentions of the, what is it, the, the marron grass that's grown up and stuff, do you know, I suppose like if I look back I'd say right, I never remember there being these big fucking sand dune lumps of grass in the middle of the beach ever. Do you know, as you come down where the rocks were, do you know this or I don't know obviously right. Yeah no 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 I I I hear you and to be honest, like a lot of the stuff that, that that's been fed into you guys, I get it. Yeah. And if I didn't get it, then i will have no value. Because yeah. they won't be asking you. And I will always say to someone, and they, and they could be ranting and, and going at it hard. And then they'll apologise. Well, hold on. If, if you lose the passion for wanting positive change, yeah. then you're, 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 I'm no good and you're no good. People have to tell you. You know what I mean? Like, I have people stop me on the street every day. And it's great. And the first thing says, sorry, I was just talking about it. I say, well, walk away. It's no problem. You know what I mean? If they, didn't, if they, if they walk by you, <laughs> then, <Yeah. laughs> then you've got a problem. That's it, yeah. <laughs> You know? At no point out, yeah. Only so absolutely, yeah. but to go back to what you're saying, I, I will hand on heart. I will say, and I've, I've said this often. I've said this inside the Fingal County Council. When I got elected in 2014, the aspiration for what could happen in Bobrigan was that low that people said to me, "If you do nothing else more, if you just get the grass cut on the beach, will you?" <laughs> and I said, well, yeah. "Jesus Christ, what, what's going on here?" No. You know. And it was only then when you get engaged in, sort of say, because I've been involved in business and different stuff. And the, okay, you'd be down on the beach, but maybe you weren't taking notice, maybe whatever, you know. I said, these people are right, what's going on here? Yeah. And then I went into Fringal County Council. Can we not get something sorted here? Look, we've, a, we've a, a dirty little tar path, the grass is overgrown over the path, there's nettles, thistles, everything, right? And then the answer comes back well, you know, the upper embankment, we don't own that. 
Yeah. That's an engineering um, uh, structure that holds the railroad up. Irish Rail on that. I said, I don't care who owns it. You know, we, we, need, we, need, we need to look at how we, how we manage that space. That's a public space. Yeah. And it's the most valuable public space. And during COVID, it became the most valuable space for people who were living in apartments in Wilbrigan, yeah. had no gardens, nowhere to go, and they were on the beach and going for walks. And it's so important. But, and that's probably one of the best beaches in Fingal. And on heart, I'll tell you that. Um, because of the way it is and the way it's configured and the way you can swim and, and you know, but, yeah. but it's completely neglected, 100%. And it's not from the amount of people that have been fighting for change and looking at how we, how we develop it and how we deliver it. So, like it took three or four months, and this is, this is really wrong, to get that sand dune moved. Yeah. Out from underneath the air so people can actually push up. The, 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 and it's not for the, the want the questions and you say, like, what's going on here? When I discovered this first time at the end, and I said, there was no allocation of funds or um, manpower delivered. Every project has an allocation. So you have X amount of man hours for that work. We're doing it here. We're doing yeah. it in Scaries or we're doing it wherever we're doing it. And, there's, doing and, there's, and, right and there's a budget. And there's a budget. <laughs> but there was no budget for it. Now it's changed, right? Um, and there is a massive plan. That, that beach is going to be transformed, right? Marin grass, right? I'm getting that, right, from people. And there's a different train of thought around the ecosystem on the beach area, right? Yeah. And marin grass grows naturally yeah. in sand, and it also binds the sand dunes, right? Some people are saying to me, and this is where you get caught as a county councillor, and you're saying, well, if you we get that rubbishy grass over there and move it all out of the way and then I'll tell you straight and I'm, I'm, I'm not calling anyone out but I talk to other people tidy towns and they're into ecology into um, into making sure that that, that we, we, we we keep a level of connection with with uh, ecology and with the environment yeah and yeah. they're saying no 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 that's, no, no, that, yeah. that's natural that's natural that should grow there I look at I, I live in a space where I my personal thinking is, well, you want to put in wildflowers and, and maybe you want to leave some um, natural, what I would call weeds, but yeah. uh, some wilding, right? Yeah. That in order for that to look right, particularly in a housing estate with a large area, you have to manicure around it so it yeah. looks like it's, it's supposed to be there. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if you just leave it grow, yeah. wild, wild, right? It looks unkept to me. That's my opinion, yeah. and I and I understand what people are saying down on the beach that it looks unkept. It, if the marine grass was actually maybe ordered, then yeah. maybe then I could be shot for saying that. But when people say, "You don't go near us. You're not supposed to touch it." You know, it should grow naturally, and, and it is a wild area, and it is an environment that's harsh, and that's another reason for that grass sometimes being left a little longer is because it binds the soil, yeah. and it's in a, an area where there's massive erosion. You know, and that's just the, the way it is. But I would love to see proper lighting down there, a really wide footpath where you can have two buggies could pass without a negotiation between two parties when they meet yeah. head on with, with, with buggies and they're trying not to. And then you also have the other element that's down there, which is back to the community and people sort of say civic duty is, is, is dog felling. Oh, the crazy. Jesus. You know, the now, and, and, then, and then they'll bring up the councillors. This, we don't do that. We, no. we try to police it. We have dog wardens, but it's really back goes back to the individual that owns the dog. That's that's what it comes yeah. from. You know, yeah, no, I'll say I'll say nothing. You'll know who I'm talking about because he'll be listening. And say, ah, the tide will take that out. I said, the tide won't take it out off the fucking footpath. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, that's it. Because to be honest with you, I said, look, you have a lot of kind of passionate people onto us about obviously you know the beach. I'd argue it's probably used even more now than it was during COVID because I think people have gotten so used to it being there and you you know as a, you know using it as an actual amenity you know like I see people no matter what train I get into town into work in the mornings people down there swimming do you know like that's sort of so I refuse to call it sea swimming by the way do you do, you do it yourself I can't <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to call it sea swimming on the basis that it was just swimming when I was growing up. It was, it was not, we don't have a swimming pill. Yeah, I hear so, you. I hear you. I hear <laughs> you. It's I just swimming. You. Yeah, it's just yeah, swimming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, like I said, there were a lot of people on. And obviously, like I was saying, I didn't realise it would have taken that much work for that sand dune because, it, I mean, it was, Jesus, it was out of control. Massive. Um, 
and even like the difference the difference in that of the, that remember that was that was that taken away there was that just all shoveled no it's just moved because oh, you, you can't take you can't yeah. take it away yeah so it's yeah. just moved it's just dispersed yeah um, and 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 just pushed back across and that's probably where that marine grass is now starting to uh, to grow yeah. over yeah. on the left hand side. Um, but like at least now you have a hardcore area. Like if you look at um, the access to Bulbrick, yeah. and you've got three really uh, accesses. You've got under the tunnel, um, which is limited enough, right? Yeah. Um, and then you have if people want to park around the car park area and come in off the beach to go in at the bowl house there, and that to me is the main access. Yeah, you can go in across at the top of the bar road there in the Metallic Tower area. Yeah, but you're you tend most people tend to come in underneath the the arches, yeah. you know, yeah. and look, it's it's heartbreaking watching um people pushing pulling buggies with kids and they're coming down for a day but it's it's a lot more accessible now but it's going to it's going to get a lot better there's so much positive stuff happening that's i tell you um, and yeah. balbriggan is going to change over the next i'd say five years we've lost a bit of ground with covid 100 percent. we can't play yeah. everything COVID. Yeah, but at yeah. the same time a lot of the traction that we would have got is only is only starting to happen now you'll see the key street development that's proposed to be finished and complete at um third quarter of next year Right, so there'll be shovels on the ground. It's skates on. Huh? Yeah, so that's so. But the consultation has gone out now. And yeah, we'll be asking people to feed into it. Tell us what you want. Tell us what you think. Give us honest opinions, and we'll have a look at that. There will be changes with road traffic movements around the harbour area where the cars go coming around to make yeah. sure that it's accessible for families and kids and everyone. It's safe, whatever. And um, then, as I say, we have to. The, the, the green lung if you like at the back the mill pond park how that's going to develop out that would be another say two two three years you've Braemore Castle and then you've the beach harbour area like so all of these changes are going to happen fairly succinctly and and it will be noted so Brigham is, is an amazing place but it will become yeah. more sought after when we get to the the open spaces that we want to create and generate like you yeah, know I mean? yeah. and there's massive money and just one thing that always comes back to me and you probably hear it yourselves out there is about how much of the money have we spent like have we spent, <laughs> you know and, uh, and everyone's concerned about it. there's like Fingal County Council's budget on an, on, on an annual basis is, is 280 million right we're one of the wealthiest local authorities we're not stuck for money in Fingal County Council we're yeah. no illusion we have what every local authority wants in the area we have the airport the National Airport, the DAA, pay massive amounts of rates yeah. into Fingal yeah. County Council. So it's not really about the money. It's about the, the desire to deliver and the will to do it, Yeah, you know, and the capacity inside to deliver on that. So we have 50 million. We probably, to be honest, if you're asking the question, I'd say we probably spent about eight Maybe ten. That cycle length. But <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not that's not that you are the end money. <laughs> that's 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 national funds. Totally yeah. different. Totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah, it's, uh, it, it, I do have one last question though. It's just came into my head, and I'm just curious. Are there any there? plans to with the the redevelopment of the harbour? Any plans to dredge it? Yeah, hundred percent. That will really happen. Yeah, no, the wheels right. right. Yeah. yeah, and there's another conversation going on, which is not. I mean, I'm going back. I've heard this twenty years ago about putting in um, sluice gates. Yeah. You know where the bull nose is in the middle of the harbour. Yeah. yeah, to seal that off so you can actually have leisure craft at the back. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen because there's a lot of money involved in it. It would be nice to have a retention of water. Yeah, in in the harbour, but that back end of the harbour is. Um, is a storm safety area for boats yeah. when, the, when the weather is really, really heavy and hard and the boats, instead of getting battered at the front, they can move yeah. back in there. Yeah. Now, I don't know if there's any, there isn't wall space there, but there is, there's holes in there that are redundant. In other words, they're not sailing, they never will, <laughs> and they need to be taken out. And <laughs> as I say to some of the lads, it might be a bit controversial at times, say, but if you don't own the harbour, that belongs to the people. You might fish out of it, yeah. but it's not yours. Oh, it's yeah. ours, it's everybody's. You know, and same as when I say when we're doing this, I mean the people. When when you look at it, you say we we we've got we've bought the Browns. When I say we, I mean the people are bringing all that. Yeah, that's because it's. Hey, yeah, Frank, dream yeah. come true. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be bringing anywhere actually. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um. No, I think we did was wrap up there, we? Yeah, yeah. brilliant Tom. Yeah, thanks, thanks very much. Brilliant. Thanks no, very much for no, 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 um, You can, know how to talk to talk, Tony. You know I, how to I, talk. I, I'll come back again and fill you in when, when and you can challenge me on some of the delivery dates on some of the stuff. But yeah. it's, all, it's all happening in Fingal, but most of it's happening in Belbringen.
That's yeah. great. That's what we want to hear. We want to hear good positivity about the town. We need to exactly. That's it. But yeah, Tony, look, thanks very much. Keith, thanks very much. I want to say thanks to you. And lads, thanks very much. And I'll talk to you next week, anyway. Yeah, I'll talk to you next week as well. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.